So here's a few highlights from the last day of CPAC yesterday. The Occupy people made an attempt to show up again, but didn't much impress anyone. Big Government Gary and his sidekick crony capitalism were in the house. So was Rick Santorum, or at least a two-dimensional version of him. Now, no one beats down on environmentalists like Irish filmmaker Anne McElhaney. Environmentalists say that they love, they, lo they love windmills. They love windmills, but apparently they love the bald eagle too. But guess what? You can't have both. You can't have both. There are consequences to things. So your endangered species all over this country are getting killed by those windmills. Here's another thing about the environmentalists. They love those windmills, but guess what they don't like? They don't like copper mining. So they won't allow the copper mine up there in Alaska, the pebble mine to open, yeah? But you know what? You can't have a windmill without copper. Join the dots, for God's sake! <laughs> oh, okay, I can see the time now. I've got ten seconds. And my office suite so mate John Bolton sums here. up the case in admirably. In eight years as president, Ronald Reagan brought us to the brink of victory in the Cold War, the 20th century's Third World War. By contrast, in just three years, Barack Obama has brought us, brought us to the brink of an Iranian nuclear weapons capability, dangerous proliferation worldwide, of dramatic insecurity and instability in the Middle East and growing threats to Israel, and of paralyzing reductions in our defense and intelligence budgets. Just in case he hasn't gotten the point, let me make it clear. President Obama, you are no Ronald Reagan. This is Signe Thomas of Florida State University who won CPAC's essay contest and explains how she got to be so sound. I am so lucky to attend Florida State University because it has such a pro-free market economics department. An entire econ class was based on Milton Friedman's Free to Choose TV and book series. Signe says she hopes eventually to go into broadcasting for Fox News. Somehow I have a hunch she's going to make it. And then of course there was my panel with Paul Kangor and Craig Shirley pondering how to apply the lessons of the Gipper to today's scene. Something like this. I think he'd say, our founders designed a constitution that had a motor to make the country go and a set of brakes and guardrails to keep government from getting out of control. In the last century, what liberals have done is torn out the brakes, ripped out the seatbelts, and pushed the pedal to the floor. And we're about to crash. I think in a typical Reagan way, he'd then add, uh, needless to say, the liberals have taken their airbags and sent them to Congress instead of put them in cars. <laughs> you know, that was his style, right? Uh, but I think that's the way a Reagan speech would begin. And then he'd go on there to talk in both broad and specific ways about what it means to have a limited government under our Constitution. Uh, and why we've gotten away from that, instead of just the one or two sentence references we often get from our candidates that reflects, I think, a forgetfulness of the Constitution, which, by the way, it's why I did this book. It used to be on the, it used to be central to every presidential campaign in the 19th century, and if you go back and read old inaugural addresses, most of their incoming presidents spent half or more of their inaugural addresses talking about the Constitution. The only modern president who did that at all in his inaugural address was Reagan in 1981. So we'll stop there and look forward to your questions and comments. And Now, this is why you write books, gang. You get chicks. These, in fact, are the publicists for my new book from Regnery. I'm sure hoping it's going to be a long marketing campaign.